Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. Check it out. Today we are doing the finally in the ocean review uh, of the Chasing M2. Look at this beast. I got the claw on here. Um, got Sanaya with me today. My daughter Sanaya, she's going to be helping me. We got to the spot right outside of Oluwalu Lahaina. I wanted to get out to like 100 feet depth. And uh, Sanaya, if you want to pull that thing out real quick, there's a fish finder that I'm using from the power vision power ray you see this little thing and you can connect it wirelessly um, to your tablet go ahead and throw that back in and it's just like a little simple fish finder and it's working really well look at that so it's just like a sonar thing and it's shooting and it's finding our depth something really convenient for me when i'm doing these sub reviews just to get out there and um make sure we're not too shallow and we have a good uh, amount of depth to test these submarines. But anyway, enough talking. Let's go ahead and boot this thing up and uh, let's get in there, do some, some diving down to the bottom. We'll probably see some fish. Might even try some fishing with this thing. And actually, I have a 360 camera today I'm going to be mounting on top. And so we'll have some cool 360 views around the sub as well, aside from its 4K camera on the front. So Anyway, let's get started with the Chasing M2 Ocean Dive. So basically, um, I had to get this little backpack. I had this laying around from some drones. It's just a generic backpack because the thing won't fit in the case it comes with, the M2, with this claw on top. So I got the E-reel here. So the E-reel is going to connect first before we, attaching it to this top portion is just to reel it in. So we wanna have it out of that for now. So we're just gonna set this thing down on the cooler. And we really don't wanna to forget to attach that little loop around the, the back anchor, that's all on. So this thing essentially is ready to go on the sub side. And next thing we do is just put our little iPad. This is the iPad mini five. So I'm just putting it right in there have our little jumper that comes. This actually comes with the E-reel. <laughs> Tangle mess, of course, of course, right when I don't need it to be. Get all the cat hair off and all the sand and stuff. And then this guy goes right into one side of the reel. Now this can be kind of finger tight. And now we just need the other side, make sure we have, you know, room. Maybe put that around the back of the reel. And then this part attaches to the controller. This sub actually comes with a um, little mount on top you can put on top. So I went ahead and screwed it in, used some Loctite on here. And I'm just gonna put this Insta360 One camera on. You do all this in post-processing with 360 cameras, so it doesn't really matter which direction they're facing. You kinda wanna have the big areas of the glass case on the front and the back because you'll see a little bit of a seam in certain areas. So we want to really crank this thing down so it's not like flipping all over the place. So anyway, there it is. Look at that. The 360 cams on top. Big old hulking beast. I think we're ready to dive. So turning on the controller and the sub immediately turns on. We're just kind of waiting for a connection. And what we're looking for are these lights. We want the ROV light to be on solid. And then I switched it to 5G and it seems like the latency. If you guys saw my initial unboxing, I'll have it pop up here and also be down in the description as well as where you can get this sub. But I switched it to 5G wireless to the iPad and it seemed to take out a little bit of that uh, lag. Remember the lag was a little bit to be desired when we were doing the unboxing. That actually made it quicker. Everything is connected. Now I just need to launch the Chasing app. So it's the Chasing Go 1 launching it. And let's make sure it can find the Chasing M2. There it is. And ready to go. So let's just start. There is our interface. And I want to do something cool before we get going here is I want to put just a little bit of a, a big old squid in the claw. And so we can take that down with us and see what kind of fish come around. Squid I use for fishing, kind of like just fishing bait. Opening the claw, nice. And then I'm gonna close the claw with this squid in there. 
You gotta just click it once and it closes. Nice, so that thing's gonna go down in the water. Put this in the water. Woo! Sucker's in there. And uh, let's start diving. So I wanna record, hopefully you guys can see the screen. There's the squid there, I'm gonna start recording. Now this should be in 4K on the sub, okay guys? So there is the sub. Let's go ahead and arm it by um, just pressing the lock button here. Woo, and he leveled out perfectly, nice. So, so forward and back are on this left stick. Down is on the right stick, so I'm pulling down. Hopefully you guys can kind of see this. I'm gonna go ahead and go down a little bit and then go in depth lock. And this is kind of a problem. If you look at the screen here, you see that it went out of my Imperial settings. Okay, left stick is turning the sub left and right. Let's see, let's play with the controls first. Okay, wow, that's really touchy. So my left trigger right here is making the sub tilt up and down. Okay. So it's really convenient to see the orientation of the sub because I'm in pure blue water. So if you look at the left bottom graphic, you can see that I'm pointing directly down. And really quick, before we go any further, I do want to go into the settings. And I want to get um, the units in inch. You see, I'm just changing it into inch. And that'll basically make it so I can read the, the depth a little better. We are only five feet deep. Let's go ahead and come back, get down. So this is all working great. I don't want to tilt too much in weird directions, but <laughs> sorry guys, it's gonna take me a little while to get used to this. So remember, right stick is our depth. Left stick is steering it. Okay, so let's face it down. So left roller is gonna go down to the bottom and then let's go forward. So pulling the right stick down, so that's pretty cool, you can be kind of facing down and look at this reel. So that's pretty cool. The reel is basically unreeling as I'm going down. And I don't necessarily have to push forward to go down in this direction. That's what's so cool about this. Since it's a 360 kind of sub, I can just be going basically down and pointing in any direction I want. Okay, we're at 30, 30, 40 feet deep on the bottom left of the screen, 80 degrees Fahrenheit. Any direction I want as I'm going down. So we're just going down at a pretty good clip here, 60 feet. Starting to make out some of the bottom here, awesome. And I'll have, the, remember I'll hopefully have that 360 degree camera recording so you guys can see kind of what's going on here. There's the depth lock. Okay, I'm seeing the light on the controller went on. So apparently maybe it has to be a certain depth before you can do that. So now we're gonna hang out here on the bottom and I just wanna, since I can see my orientation, I just wanna use these controls. So I'm rotating the left trigger roller to the left a little bit slowly. Now I'm turning the left thumbstick to the right. Yeah, see how that turns us? So let's orientate ourselves, left thumbstick to the right a little bit. Slowly, so yeah, we can turn really slowly. There's a little fish over there. So it's holding its depth very well. Um, don't see anything coming to the um, squid yet, but it's kind of cool just to have it hanging out there. That's pretty neat. Um, okay, so remember our right stick is our, is our depth up and down. Now the right stick is also like uh, strafing left and right. So it's just going side to side. So if I'm pushing the right stick to the right now, you see how the whole sub is keeping its orientation? But watch this. You see how it's moving to the right? That's super awesome. So you don't have to turn the head if you don't want to. You can just basically like a roll of a drone, right? You're rolling left and right. That's pretty cool. Okay, so let's just go forward a bit. I do want to make sure I'm not going to like wrap this tether around my anchor. 
because we're down at like 100 feet. So just kind of cruising around. It's pretty responsive, I'll say that right now. Really feeling really responsive. Um, especially that pitch control. Man, that's a little bit too sensitive. And you can adjust the sensitivity if you wanted to. Let's see if we can here. If we go into our settings and we go into handle. Yeah, so do you see this over here, the linear power? If we want to make it a little less sensitive, we can go there. And then we'll go back, just clicking on the screen. Now let me try the left roller again. Now oh, it's still pretty darn sensitive. So that didn't really do much. So that's going to be quite sensitive. Um, what I haven't tried yet, guys, is the right uh, finger trigger roller. So let's try that. I think that's going to like start to do somersaults left and right. So let's try. So rolling it to the right a little. Yeah. Wow, that's super responsive. Look at this. So I can point it down. Man, this is a true 360, guys. This is the one... If you want precision control, oh my gosh. See this? So just pushing that little right roller to the left a little bit. Zoop. To the right. Does it want to kind of stop? Let's see if we just keep rolling it. Okay, interesting. So it has a limit. Even though I'm pushing the right roller, um, trigger roller to the right, it has a limit to where it can roll so you don't get too like discombobulated, you know? So you don't just keep like twisting around. So you can kind of keep your level. That's, I actually kind of like that. Facing back up. I think that's the boat over there. Right up there. Let's turn and see what's up here. Oh, interesting. Let's see if we can just point it all the way up. Yeah, that's us right there. But look at the way it's keeping this depth. So the depth is really locked at like 85 feet right now. I'm gonna go a down a little bit closer to the, to the bottom by pulling the right stick down. There we go. Just pulling it down slowly. This is great because I don't even have to worry about this spool is just unraveling here. Don't even have to worry about it. That's awesome. Getting down close to the bottom, 96 feet. This is great, man. This sub, just from using it this much, this is the first time I've had it in the water, guys, but just from using it so far, this is the best as far as control, precision, and all that stuff. So just fantastic so far. Turn here, looking for some fish. I'll also try to have that 360 video up so you guys can be seeing that. And uh, of course, all the other cameras I have on here so you guys can see what's happening with the spool, what's happening with the, uh, the boat situation up here, and all that stuff. Let's try a little drop off here. I want to drop off this squid down at the bottom. So I'm going to go down at 100 feet now. Let's go down a little further. What's great about this sub is it doesn't even feel like it's tugging on a tether. Now I do have the stabilization on in the settings, the image stabilization. So you guys can kind of be the judge of how that looks. We're at 115 feet. This is great. Almost to the bottom. Let's just try touch and then I'll straighten it out. Almost there, going down really slowly. And there, touching, okay. So we'll go up just a little bit. Okay, and then we're gonna straighten out, level out here, just by using this left trigger, really simple. And let's let this squid go and see if anything comes to get it. <laughs> Um, which way is the current going? Maybe that way to the left. So maybe I'll orientate, orientate myself to the left a little. See how the squid's head is going that way. So we can just kind of see it float away and see if any fish get it. Maybe even on that 360 cam, we'll catch that. 
Okay, ready? We're gonna let go. One, two, three, clicking and holding. Bye-bye, squid. And we can quickly just get it in view, super quickly. That's great. And just adjust as needed. Really easy once you learn the controls. And let's see if anything like picks it up. Real simple, wow. I might even wanna try to grab this thing see how you know see how stable it is so you can change your controls around there's a USA and a Japanese Japan tile style um, control scheme and I think I'm on the USA right now if I remember correctly let's just check that out real quick handle no I'm on Japan so um, I'm not even gonna try the <laughs> the USA for for just this dive because I'm already used to these controls so I can still you know keep that little squid in view nothing's coming after it yet let's just go down and try to grab it why not let's see how precise this thing is remember i had some issues with some of the other subs where it was just very difficult to to grab things now this is a pretty calm day you know we waited for a calm day to be out here but um, this is kind of a small object so i'm not expecting perfect control but it would be nice if this can actually work. Pulling down. And we'll just try to get this thing pretty easy so far. Nice, I'm just turning to kind of keep it centered. Just the occasional slight lag is all I'm kind of feeling. So remember when we close, all we want to do is click that right button. So maybe I'll turn the sub a little further down so we have like an angle. Okay, getting close, getting close. <laughs> is this going to work? Going down a little bit. A little bit of current blowing that thing around. There we go, now let's go down. Oh, I'm touching it. I speared it, <laughs> okay. We speared it, guys. Let's go ahead and close the claw. Oops, I just took a picture. A Little bit of a delay from the picture. Let's go ahead and close this claw. Claw is not closing, why? There, okay, sorry, I was, I was trying to hold it. Now I just clicked it once and it closed. So we kind of got it, but it's a little bit um, just on the, the edge, right? I like grab the skin but I would not be able to do that with a lot of the other subs I tested so uh oh okay a little bit of an issue guys guess what it disconnected and it just reconnected so I haven't seen that happen before so a little bit of a con there you saw that disconnection and it locked did it lock back up? Yeah, so it relocked the motors and it started to float up. So I'm gonna unlock again. And I'm gonna go back down. When I unlocked, it leveled out. Whoops, there goes our squid. Let's see if we can follow it, see if any big fish get it for just a little bit. So we went up, we're at 104 feet now. So it started to float up when it locked, so at least that's good. It's gonna try to get you, you know, back to your area, um, back to the surface if it disconnects. So just kind of following this squid. Here we go, it looks like our squid is on the floor, ocean floor there. Go down a bit. Full speed forward. That's full speed. Seems pretty quick, got there quick. So I'm really loving the control. Aside from that little disconnect, of course we're gonna do a pros and cons, guys, when we when we surface on here. Let's see what our power is. So we've used um, about 15%. We're at 86% power of the sub. Ooh. Okay, it's starting to kick up the sand there. Maybe kicking up the sand will draw some fish in, right? 
So we'll see how the sand is in the motors when we come back up. But um, so far so good. Reel here, we've got about a quarter left right there. That's good. So let's just cruise on the bottom for a bit. I know this may be kind of boring to a lot of you guys, but um, really we just want to see how good this thing operates, you know? Pulling down a little bit more. Let's go over to this seagrass, so full stick forward. Instantaneous response, holding the depth at 129.5 feet perfectly. And pull down just a little bit on the depth. And we're just cruising through the seagrass, so it holds its depth phenomenally. Don't have any um, mile per hour, but we just have a temperature and depth. But uh, I'd assume we're going at least a few miles per hour here, which is great. And remember, it'll maintain its depth because it has eight motors, right? Unless the seafloor starts to go a little higher, which it is, I'm gonna have to push up a little. Um, it'll just keep going straight, just hit the bottom. It'll just keep going like straight. That's so cool. And then it's adjusting, all of its motors are adjusting to keep it stabilized. Is that a fish there? Okay, let's go check out this fish. I'm not gonna grab you fish, but I just wanna check you out real quick. So let's try the strafing. Instead of turning the head, awesome. Look at this strafe. I don't have to turn the head if I don't want to, I can just strafe, I'll turn it now because he's getting out of view. Pull up a little. Very good, whoops, hit the bottom. Okay, sand in the motors test. Sand and rocks in the motors. So we finally have a little bit to view here of some reef. And uh, the response is really good in this 5.8 gigahertz. I can tell you it's really good. Hey, a little clearer here. A little bit more to see on this reef. Oh, nice. Got a little bit more life here. So I'll have that 4K video up of the sub, guys, so you can see all that. Don't want to hit the reef, of course, so I'm going to be careful here. Go nice and slow. Nice. Awesome. So remember, this thing has lights, uh, so we may do a night dive to check out how the lights look. Not really dark enough here to use the lights. So I can just kind of go slowly forward, skim the bottom with the face down, and we should maintain our depth. Yeah. I'll tell you what, I'm just gonna turn the lights on right here, just see if it makes a difference. So this is low. I see him on the claw there, you see that? turn into this little shelf here, see if it makes a difference here. And high. Yep, so just click that button a couple times. It just has low and high light. So the precision is great. You see how the current's going to the right just a tad? So I can just strafe to the left to hold it. And man, really get close in here in these caves and inspect things. Just fantastic, really liking this. Go up a bit so we don't hit the coral. So the occasional lag on the, on the Wi-Fi, and that's kind of what I'm seeing. Cute little, um, Sonia, what are those yellow fish called, like in Nemo? What was that one's name? Yeah, the yellow one in Nemo, what was that one's name? The, the name of it though? <laughs> Uh, oh, that's his house right there. It's like a yellow angelfish something. I'm kind of chasing one right now. Nice structures here. I have, remember I have the lights full blast. We're at 73% on the sub. Um, and just kind of cruising, skimming, and seeing what we can see in these little holes and stuff. Another little bit of lag. And, uh, but look at this, I can really precisely control it. 
I'm not like in danger of like hitting coral and stuff with a lot of the other subs I've tested. It's like you're almost hitting coral. A few of them I've hit some coral heads and had to like really regain control just because they were so uh, clunky with the control. But this is absolute precision here. This is great. I really do hope that 360 cam on it is recording. If it didn't record, guys, I'll get it in another one because we're going to do like night dives and all kinds of stuff with this thing. So let's pitch the head up just a little so we can see the horizon. Oh, there's a big old Roy over there. So that's an invasive species, that big blackfish uh, back there. Let's go see if we can get up to him. This is the fish that um, really we try to, whoops, wrong way on the left trigger really try to eradicate this fish because he goes around a little little uh, Hawaii fish invasive species um, documentary here. <laughs> he goes around looking for baby fish eggs in their nests and he goes around and he just eats them all. He just goes in the holes and finds fish eggs. So this guy is an invasive, very invasive fish and we try to eradicate him when we dive we spearfish, we just try to kill these ones because they just take over the reef and they kill all the baby fish that don't even have a chance to hatch. So let's try a little strafe here. This will be cool. So strafing to the left, I want to get around. He went in a hole somewhere. I lost him. But look at that. The strafing is great. I can move around. I can kind of orbit is what I wanted to say. Um, I can kind of orbit with this thing very easily and controllably. Let's see what's in this little hole over here. Awesome. So we'll go forward, come down a bit. And I can multi-purpose the controls. So I can be moving the sub down while I'm strafing. Let's try that. Strafing to the left and come down a bit. Yes, it all works. Awesome. Go a little bit forward. Remember, I got the um, lights blasting. Let's see if we can see anything in this hole. Wow, yeah. So at least I'm not hitting coral yet, anyway. Really don't want to do that as much as possible. Let's see how cl close we can get into this hole. How much precision we got here. Um, once you, again, once you get used to the sticks, guys, it's going to be very simple with the controls. So there we go. Let's try some light in there. Bring it down just a little more. Let's get down. Just going to be kind of just resting on the bottom here. Just want to be careful not to stir up too much sand. I can kind of feel the tether pulling on it now because I'm just a little bit um tether is almost goners but as you can see pretty good pretty good uh precision i'm gonna go up now so we don't hit any more coral or any coral at all and uh, let's go let's just go over the reef here and then we'll bring it back up and we'll call it a day for this initial dive test do a little face down forward Awesome. Check out these fish while we're down here. So, I am hoping that I'm coming towards the boat now. Let's see if that's the case. Oh, there's an angel fish. Um, what was the um, what was the big striped yellow fish in Nemo? What was his name? Scar, right? I'm not sure. I don't remember, Sanaya. Anyway, big old angelfish type of fish here. I thought his name was Scar or something. Let's follow him for a second. A little bit of video lag there. So it seems like it's, it's really smooth. And then on occasion, you'll get that lag. But look at this. I'm just keeping my thumbstick pushed forward. And I'm just kind of nice following him, nice and easy. That was a good little follow session. And then 
Yeah, so really finicky on the rollers, the trigger. So I just barely touched it. And you can see how I pitched it up just a little bit. And that worked fairly well. Don't want to hit this coral, so we'll bring it up. Awesome. So fish follow very, very easy with this sub. The controls are just premium. And remember, we have the right trigger too. Whoops, let me get down here. So if for some reason you didn't want to change orientation, right roller trigger, whoop, look at that. <laughs> so maybe you needed to grab something uh, that was that, like perpendicular to the way you were. Just rotate it like that and this sub will keep itself um, level. As you can see, it's drifting with the, the uh, current a little bit, but it's still doing very well. See that little thing on the sand? I just want to explore that, see what that is. It just caught my attention. I think it's just a piece of coral. Yeah, it's just a little brighter. But you see how easy that was, just coming in super close? It's kind of like a piece of dead rock. So maybe this will be a good um, try to pick this up because it doesn't look like it's attached to anything. Come down. Yeah. Precision is great on this. Remember the strafing, clicking once, whoops, stop, click and hold to open back up. So we're just rocking a little bit, but I think I can get this. Let me try this again. Whoa. So a little bit of current got me there. That was wild. Oh, is something pulling me? Wow. Can't go forward anymore. Am I locked? Oh, okay. We, um, the motor basically shut off. So we need to relock. You see how it gets level again? So when I was down there, for some reason, we lost connection and the motor's locked up again. So I'm going to go full stick forward here. Remember, look at our um, power on the top right. We're at 59%. There's that Roy again. Is that a Roy? Yep. He's like, what are you doing over there? So the motor's uh, locked, cut me out of the drone power. So that wasn't the best there. I didn't really like that. So it'll occasionally do that, I guess where it thinks it loses connection. Oh, probably that coral's in the way too. So if we want to hit it at a different angle, we can, remember, we can strafe to the left a bit. So we're clear of anything. There we go, that seems like a good angle here. Let's just go right in and try to grab this thing again. That way, down, whoa! <laughs> forward oh man so close so close <laughs> I'm never gonna give up am I okay I think this is the one guys I think this is it there we go okay so we'll tilt up so it came out of the claw <laughs> boy Okay guys, well I think, I mean, you can get the, the gist of it. Um, you just have to work your claw and be precise with it. I think the tether is getting quite a bit um, to the end here. You can see that it's just about empty there. So I think I'm gonna come back and we're gonna reel this thing in. I wanna try just shutting off the sub. So I'm gonna hit lock here on the motors. So the motors are now uh, locked, so it's basically just floating there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn on this reel, open that thing up, and then remember all we're doing is we're putting in the front of this little white reel, and then we're going over to the back and getting it be right behind those two black things. Now we can kind of turn the reel on. So just pushing that button there and waiting till it kind of boots up and we see a green light here. And this reel is ready to go now. We'll hit slow and fast. 
Let's see how this thing does. I'm having, I'm definitely going to have to hold it here. Whoa. So kind of at the wrong angle, but this thing is doing it. You see how the, the tether is just all the way wrapped around that thing. Because I don't want to pull my anchor and the boat's kind of like just on the anchor, right? But it's having enough power to pull it slowly. Maybe I'll switch into slow speed. Barely going. The motor is locked, so the sub, it's basically just pulling the sub right now because the motors are off. So having a little bit of issue, so I'm going to help it. I'm just going to kind of help it pull it a little bit. So I'm going to kind of help this thing out and I'm controlling the sub. I'm just pulling back on it on the sub. And you can see that the reel is now kind of working. Just kind of turning the sub and then once the reel starts reeling, I know I'm going the right way. So better to be just under the surface, find the direction that works the best for the reel and then just keep going in that direction with the sub so it alleviates that reel working okay it would have been better if it wasn't around this strap here a little less drag but we're doing it we're doing it the motor is going to keep trying which is good and it hasn't seemed to shut off yet even with all this torque i'm loading on it you know what i mean there's a lot of torque going on here and it's really loading on it but it's still it still is able to Reel it in. Let's go up to the surface and see where we're at. Hey, there we are. <laughs> and the 360 cam is still straight up. That's great. Try to go uh, in front of the boat a little bit. Did it turn that switch off? Oh. Good. Just went ahead and so now I just turned off the reel, fighting that current in reverse, all the way up, and there is our sub. Let's lock the motors. Oh man, the 360 cam fogged up, even though I had some anti-fog in there. Let's pull this thing up out of the water here, and let's talk about this. But boy, look at that 360 cam in there. It's all fogged up, man, that's a bummer. Oh my gosh, and there's water in there. Holy smokes. Well, that really sucks. Maybe I was down too deep, I don't know. It's supposed to be good for about 100 feet. Jeez, yeah, I see water in there. It's just like sloshing around. <laughs> oh, jeez. It probably killed this camera, so open this thing up. And look at this, guys. Got water in there, not much, but Enough to be on the bottom and it looks like the camera is off. But you see that there? Just water inside of a waterproof case is not good. And I had everything sealed up great. I even had silicone grease on there. I wonder it was so foggy. It was just like heating up the salt water in there. Okay guys, well I think that is going to do it. Um, we really did put this thing through an initial uh, dive test and went through all the paces, tried to grab some things. Things worked really well. I mean, of course, it's going to be kind of variable using the claw, right, to, to grab things depending on the current. Definitely better than any other sub I've used as far as that 360 control. Just fantastic. There is that QYC sub. Uh, it was it the V6? Um, that one was really hard to control. This one is a lot easier because it has those those stopping points, right? Especially with the, the depth hold. That was just phenomenal. Um, you could move it in any direction you wanted, go forward, back, in any orientation while you were holding the depth as well. It seemed pretty fast. I mean, it could fight some pretty good current down there at times. The only thing was, I think two times the motors locked unexpectedly and I couldn't figure out like what was happening right it just started to um, float up just slowly so I had two disconnections then I could just unlock the motors and it seemed to take care of that there was one full disconnection where it seemed to reconnect and kind of heal its connection itself it seemed like the app actually 
froze or the video froze. So still having a little bit of those little problems once in a while with these things. So I'm sure they'll continue to iron, iron those out, but it's definitely come a long way since the original chasing series, right? From the original uh, chasing Gladius and up into all those other ones like the Dory and uh, the Gladius 2, the Chasing Mini. This is definitely the culmination of all those. There's also a pro model. So if you're looking for something that has bigger batteries and is more professional, it's that orange one. Um, this is kind of like the prosumer model where it's on the verge of being almost like a pro model, but it's still affordable. You know, it's like a couple thousand dollars where the pro ones are up in like five to 10,000. So if you wanted to experiment with these and actually get really a really good sub, I think I honestly can say this is the best one I have ever used. If you haven't seen uh, my reviews on all my other ones, go ahead and check out the cartle pop up for all the other subs I've done. And also I'll have all those down in the description. I'll have like my playlist of all my subs. Um, and that's why I can really honestly say that this is the best one I've ever used. Real work phenomenally, very good. What I was expecting it to do was maybe shut off because it was getting bound up. Remember the tether was wrapped around and it was having a, a problem. There wasn't enough torque in those brushless motors, but it kept going, man. As soon as I figured out the orientation of the sub to pull it back and it kind of alleviated the pull on this tether, it just kept going and kept trying to reel the thing in and never shut off. So absolutely phenomenal automatic reel. Definitely get this if you can afford it. The controller, the controls, the lights, everything. Remember I was talking about just a little bit sensitive on these guys, but if you really finessed it really light, you can get some really smooth movements. Controller is very comfortable. As you can see, it holds the iPad mini nice and tight. And this will fit like the iPad Pro in it, guys. So if you wanted to put the iPad Pro, this bracket is big enough to just stretch out and fit a huge tablet. It also, remember it has that HDMI port on the, the back of it. So while you're streaming it to your screen here in your iPad, you can actually put an HDMI cable and have it on like another big television or something if you wanted to. One more thing I should mention guys, remember I was resting on the bottom for a bit, trying to like pick up that rock. And I, I wanted to check the motor, see if any sand got in these because I was kicking up some sand, resting on the bottom for a bit. Um, so I'm just gonna spin all these. Perfect there, no sand in there. This one, no problem. Let's check the uh, the two fronts. Not hearing any grit or sand. Great, so no problem with at least resting on the sand and kicking up some sand for a bit. Not even a scratch on anything whatsoever. Even the claw, let's see. Maybe a tiny bit from hitting that rock. Remember we're trying to pick up, just a tiny uh, black got um, scraped off of that these serrated edges here but everything looks perfectly fine this whole thing didn't even get a scratch from the sand since that was sitting in the sand a little bit of the ink got scraped off and that's really all that happened in that entire dive that must have been at least an hour dive so holding up very well this is doing really good this electric motor from e-propulsion just want to give them a shout out because just phenomenal man it's um kind of the cheapest boat you can put together for stuff like this. I think it only cost me a couple thousand bucks. And this motor, you know, electric motor, it's super quiet, instant power, instant torque. So now again, thanks so much for helping me out. We will see you in the next one. Don't forget to subscribe and click that notification bell so you know when my next reviews are coming out. Drones, subs, RC vehicles, boats, you name it. Love doing all these things with RC and beyond. So I hope you liked the review and we will see you later. Thanks for watching. Aloha.